one, two, you know, they get you ready. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, we're getting ready. And three. And Ryan hit that key. And it went. <laughs> It even had a little, it even had that little trill at the end that was fancy, like, <laughs> everybody busted out in laughter. The only guy that wasn't laughing was Ryan. He was a little ticked, like, this is the only sound I can get from it. What is going on, Armchair Authentic Podcast family? It's your friends, Rhett and Justin, back for another episode of the podcast, trying to help you fulfill your God assignments in life through real conversations about real life with real people. Justin and I have a really good conversation today, but before we get into it, I simply want to say thank you so much to every single one of you who have taken the time to rate and review the podcast on all your favorite podcast platforms. It is encouraging to hear from you, number one, but the reason we enjoy it more than anything is because it truly is the best way we can serve those who aren't on this journey yet. Now, if you're just now joining us for the first time, Justin and I want to say welcome to the family. It is so good to have you on this journey. If you have yet to follow us on Instagram or Facebook, you can find us there at Armchair Authentic or even on X at Armchair Off Pod. Now, Justin and I's desire for this podcast is to include you in on this journey. So we want to hear from you, not only on your comments on social, but we would love to have you email us at info at armchairauthentic.com. Send us some suggestions, some ideas, maybe some of the, even the questions that you're asking right now on your way to work because we really want to serve you well and the best way we can serve you is by answering questions or talking about the things that are actually on your mind right now in this moment so for those who have emailed us thank you so much we're looking forward to having some future episodes in regards to those questions and ideas and for those who haven't yet email us we can't wait to hear from you all right guys looking forward to that good conversation you guys ready here we go So I go back and forth on our intro. Sometimes I think the long two minutes is really good because it's good to treat it like it's somebody's first time to listen. But then other times I think, who cares? We're just jumping right to the content. <laughs> or we could just do that part in the middle. Yeah. We could change it up. Sponsor ourselves. <laughs> this... <laughs> Speaking of sponsors, hey, right? just want to be sponsored? <laughs> if I said, hey, pick me up, squeeze me and sniff, smell me, what would you be thinking right now? I'd uh, be thinking I need a new friend. <laughs> I'm just reading the words on this incredible bag of Costa Rica single origin coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that is our coffee today. Oh, man. Oh, goodness. So I shared this with you the other day, and I'm going to share this with our online podcast family. Uh, we mentioned in a couple of episodes ago that, you know, you really are, you know, you're making an impact when all of a sudden the haters and the trolls start showing up. And I don't know what happened. Um, this is a shock to me, but you guys ready for this? Uh, we've actually, Armchair Authentic has reached a new milestone. And that new milestone is we've actually been banned from TikTok. We've been banned <laughs> from TikTok. Dude, uh, you know, some of y'all are probably like, What? I didn't know you had a TikTok because you never mention it on the we intros don't talk and outros. About that one much. We really don't because it's not really a, a, a source of media that we've, I guess, know what we're doing on actually. But um, everything we've posted on Instagram and posted on Facebook and posted on Twitter uh, has been the same content that we've posted on TikTok. And so all of a sudden the other day I open it up, I'm checking, I'm looking, and it said you have had multiple violations uh, due to our guideline, you know, the community guidelines. Which, uh, honestly, and I'm talking out loud with you, and I'm trying to process this in hopes that some people can help educate us. Yeah. Because um, we never received one warning. We never received, hey, you guys are crossing the line. And right. I'm also really confused because we own all the content that we've created. We have licensing for the music. Yep. We have licensing for the creative media and video. and Logos, we own logos, all of it. All of it and everything that we do is uplifting, encouraging, really just saying, hey, an episode has dropped. We hope you'll join us. Yeah, There are a lot of questionable things on TikTok and all social media platforms 
that somehow, some way in this world's culture, I guess it, they're okay with it. Yeah. But freedom of speech and owning your own licensing and everything that you do, like, I guess they don't like that. So yeah. I've emailed them. So strange. <laughs> I've emailed them. And I was like, help me understand what we did because we would really like to be in good standing. You yeah, know, help obviously. me help you, help you help yeah. me, help you help you help me. Help us all help each other, right? And so if you're a TikTok user or fan and you could like shed some light on us, email us, let us know, comment on our Instagram or Facebook or Twitter and let us know. But I just thought that was interesting. So, you know, I'm doing everything I can to communicate and everything, every email I send gets sent back with a, yeah, you're continued to be banned. Like they don't give me any explanation yeah. because I'm like, Hey, show us what we're doing wrong. Cause we'll change it, you know, but I can't, I don't help a brother out. This is the world we <laughs> live in. <laughs> So there's that. Phil, Phil Collins warned us about this. Genesis oh, yeah. warned us about this. This is the world we live. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome, dude. You totally took my mind back to a place of, oh, wow, I'm going to definitely add that to my playlist just to kind of get that groove in. How about this one that no one oh, would really man. know but from a movie we loved? In our dreams, we'll all... Come true. I don't know this one. You've I lost. Promise me. you, cause I sounds like Brian Adams. Can see for miles. Who is this? In miles. Who is this? In time. <laughs> Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Oh, you're kidding me. Do you remember that? No. Oh, I mean, I forgot who even sang that, but oh it was gosh. epic when they went up into the like the time place and all the guys are like doing the strum of I the guitar. I just remember that. Yeah, the, the strum of the guitar if you're if you're listening we're doing the strum right now. And it was the like yeah. Bill and Ted are <laughs> they're coming to really be the hope oh, of the world man. and that's the song that sends them back out when they get in the phone booth. Uh, I don't approve the movie. It's an interesting the things that our parents let us watch uh, as a kid. We don't. We don't approve it. Uh, Bill and Ted's? Yeah. Yeah, it's We don't seriously. Well, I don't I mean, have you, you seen it lately? I mean, <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like I let my 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 two uh, oldest boys about four okay. years ago watch it. Well, I guess we just have. I don't there know. Were, there were we have different standards, <laughs> evidently. There were a couple of scenes, you know. I mean, I, you when know, I was like, "Hey guys," I don't think there was a bad scene except yeah. for some innuendo stuff that was right. in there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is gonna be. Edited. I don't know. <laughs> So we have been banned from TikTok. So back on that one. <laughs> this is the world we live. Oh. <laughs> we don't know why we've been banned. Oh, no man. reason. It is the world we live in. You don't Come get any on. reason. You can just be shut down, which is interesting. We're building life on social media platforms. Yeah. A lot of people are. They can shut you down in a moment and there's nothing you can do about it. And, it, you know, honestly, I, I, I take that as a badge of honor. Obviously, we've done nothing but inspiring and uplifting, encouraging people. And they're like, nope, we don't we don't have yeah. we don't we don't have time for that on this uh, <laughs> on this whatever stream or medium, whatever. I yeah. don't care. It's, Anyways, it's, it's wild. They can just take it. I think they're all just testing people. It's like when the AT&T <laughs> users about three months ago, you woke up one day and oh, all the phones yeah. stopped working. And, and it was like, well, what do we do? How am I going to find my family? How do they know what time I'm going to get home? What do I do? We step back into what the is, 80s really quick is what happened. How do I call? Oh, man. Yeah. Got to buy one Because none of us have a landline anymore. No. I mean, if you do have a landline, God bless you, grandma, grandpa. I don't yeah. know, but maybe. Uh, and they got those walkie-talkies, too. It's like you can buy. The, yeah. It's like it goes from coast to coast. Okay. And it's like I was very interested and actually getting that, it's like, man, if phones shut down, there does need to be a means of communication because yeah. we've kind of dumbed ourselves down as people. We don't know how to function. It's Let like, me pull out the fax machine. Where's Walmart? <laughs> GPS, Siri? Tell me how to get to Walmart. She's like, you mean the one right across the street that you can see from your house? Yeah. Give me the directions. Remember the fax machine? Those things <laughs> yeah. were like a massive paperweight. <laughs> And they had the little like silky paper. I don't mm -hmm. know. That's the best way. I it, it, like the paper would just kind of like curl. I don't know. Yeah. I, I what kind of paper that was? I have no idea. I remember leaving a voice message one time that when people would call my house because fax machines were so cool. 
It was the coolest thing. And you couldn't just afford one. I and I left a, a voice message. On it and put it I was in like, and send you've it to reached. You. Um, I think it was even when me and Summer first got married in 2000. So they were still somewhat, I mean, cool yeah. to have. Hey, you've reached the Bradshaw residence. Uh, sorry, we can't come to the phone right now. Uh, just leave us a message. Wait and if for you, the beep. If you'd like to leave us a fax, buy us a fax machine. Oh, let's and I always go. thought I was so funny. I was like, you're, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that. You don't I, remember that? No. If you'd like to buy us a fax. No, do you remember? Do you the, like to leave a fax? <laughs> Bias a fax. It's machine. so funny when voicemails. It was oh, golly. It wasn't a voicemail then. It was an answering machine. Yeah, you know, and you leave. You know, everybody's oh, gathered yeah. around, like, <laughs> hey, this is boop, boop, doo, 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 whatever, you know. But then yeah. they had those commercials where you could like buy the tape that were like, we're not home right now, do 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 do, you know. <laughs> yeah, there were all these like they creative so cool. ways to leave voicemails or voicemails answering machine message. What did we call it then? Was it a message on my answering machine? Voicemail is so much easier. I'm trying to pull up. Like, literally, here's mine. I've had this forever. It's my two oldest when they were little. Okay. And let's see if I can get this to play. Okay. You reached the phone of Justin Bradshaw. Please leave your name and number and send him a message, and he'll call you back. And the best way to reach him is by email, justin.com. Oh. I just I was like, I can't get rid so of it. So awesome. Dax and Kai. They were little bitty guys. That is so cool. And the best way to reach him <laughs> is email. <laughs> it's basically, hey guys, let people know I don't want to return voicemails. Tell them to email yeah. me if they want to get a hold of me. No, every city in America now is gonna be emailing you. Do we beep that out? Do you we might, go back you, and edit that? You may have noticed that, that <laughs> email gets beeped out. Yeah, okay. So Info <laughs> Well, I remember there was a day and time where you'd call your buddy and it's a voicemail, but you didn't realize it was a voicemail. It was like, hey, yeah, man. Hey, how are you? Oh, hold on one second. Yeah, I'm doing are you doing good, man. How are you doing? Yes. Ah, hey, I'm not here right now, but oh. if you leave your name and number, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Oh, man. Oh, I man, love doing about, it, but I hated being the recipient. Yeah, I'm like, dude, Tick it's so good. Off. Oh, man, I'm doing good. Yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll hang for a minute. Okay. You know, you're like, you just got played, fool. You got totally played. Oh. And you, it always, and every time, it's worse when you fall for it the second and third time. You're finally like, <laughs> Or or the dude would actually answer it and do the same thing. Like, I'm sick of your... No, dude, it's really Mina. Are you serious? They hang up and on then- you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was the difference between the white pages and the yellow pages? The difference was white pages was actually how you contacted people. And then yellow pages is where you could reach out to businesses. <laughs> Why do I think that's so funny? I, I just like... So the white pages were for people. Yes. But the yellow pages were for people, but they were people businesses. It was the businesses. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. If you needed a dental appointment, <laughs> call the yellow pages. If you needed to call Tony, your buddy, <laughs> look up the white pages. So how does this help people fulfill their God assignment? I do not know. Uh, that's the beauty this of this is, conversation. This is called episode, <laughs> is this going to keep being a podcast or not? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be called To Be or Not oh, to, be to Be a Podcast. <laughs> hey, speaking of, every episode that Justin and I listen to, uh, I'm, I would actually be lying if I said every episode because we're not always drinking coffee. Well, we are. We so budgeted. Justin was kind enough to bring over some coffee this morning. And so today's episode has been brought to you by <clears throat> Bones Bones Coffee, coffee Company. Company. It's terrible branding, by the way, because they don't even have the brand name on your side. I, I know. I'm like, so I'm having to read well, it. Well, it's right here on the bottom. It's yeah, on the bottom. It's not great. So I don't know if you've ever heard of Bones Coffee Company. Um, it's good. My brother got it for my uh, birthday. So thanks, Bo. Yeah, it's Costa Rica single origin coffee, medium roast. It's on the back. I thought this was funny on the back. Can you hear it on the microphone? Mm. I'm kind of shaking it here. It sounds like an egg shaker. Uh, it's a. <laughs> It says, smell me, squeeze and sniff. So I, I did this and I'm... <sighs> <laughs> it smells like it came from the region of Coto Bruce, Costa Rica, Justin. It does. It smells just like a toucan. The weight of this feels like it's a medium <laughs> roast. The smell smells coconutty with milk chocolate. And I feel like the process for this coffee was washed. So how did you get so smart at coffee, Rhett? I'm reading the label, actually. That's what I'm doing. Because branding is everything. Branding is everything. The power of branding. And I would say Bones Coffee, I don't know much about you. I need to look at, look you up. But um, we got to work on your branding. 
<laughs> it's true. And they're not paying us, so we can say yeah, what we want. They're definitely not paying us for at, at all. The coffee's good, though. Like, I enjoyed it this morning. Agreed. How about you? you I like love it? the coffee. It was it's good. It's really good. Single origin blend. It was nice. It's good. So with the power of branding, <laughs> literally, I'm looking at a box of uh, Kleenex over here. Yeah. So it's interesting to me how we call tissues Kleenex, but they're actually tissues. Yeah. Nobody says, hand me a tissue. And Do you, you say just, hand me a and tissue? you just like blew people's mind by saying that. Yeah. Because they've I, never thought about that until now. I don't know. I never run into somebody, will you hand me a tissue? I'm like, hey, will you hand me Kleenex? Right. Isn't it amazing? Mm-hmm. I'm mean, like, if you're cleaning out your ears, you're not asking for, hey, will you hand me a cotton swab? Right. <laughs> no, you're asking for what? Q-tip. Q- Q-tip. That's right. Q-tip. Synonymous. People, I, I looked this up earlier. I was like, Q, what does that even mean? It's not even in the shape of a Q. And no. the Q stands for quality cotton swab. That's what it means. Wow. You're getting a quality cotton swab on the tip of this little stick. To put in your ear, in which, by the way, they're not even designed to put in your ear. It's so interesting to me. We all, I don't know, am I the only one that uses those to clean your ears out every morning? I think I've always used them, but the when I realized it wasn't, it was one of those Ben Stiller movies back in the day <laughs> Okay, where he made a big deal out of he did not use Q-tips to clean his ear because okay. it's bad for your ear. Because it shows a scene when he later gets his ear clean, and it's the nastiest. Oh, I don't want to see that. Nastiest scene. I actually had to have that happen once. I was having some inner problems, and I was like, don't know what it is. Went to the doctor. They flushed out all the you know, uh, mm. wax and everything on both ears. Yeah. And that is a weird process to have somebody like put something on your head and be like spraying hot water in your ear. Oh, and, man, I bet. Ugh. I bet it was good though. It felt I wonder it was how weird. Much it was kind of like crammed ah, down in my ear. It's kind of like Q-tips. It was like I feel like this is good, but then not good. And it's like, oh, I don't. <laughs> am I enjoying this? Am I not? I mean, I, I, you know, and it didn't solve the issue. Um, so the power of branding. And like, here's some examples. Kleenex. We don't call they, we don't call them for what they are. They're tissue. Q-tips, cotton swabs. Got one more for you. you can blow your mind. Band aids. They're not called band aids. Wow. They're adhesive bandages. <laughs> but the company Band-Aids has branded the adhesive bandages to where nobody says, hey, will you hand me an adhesive bandage? I'm bleeding. Right. Hey, man, give me a Band-Aid. Give me that Band-Aid. I mean, come on. So there's power in it, I think. So why do you buy what you buy? Do you buy it for the brand? Are you loyal to the brand? Or you, you, could you care less when you go to the store? Would you? What about you? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely brand loyal. Um, from the smallest things to like even guitar, I mean, instrumentation brands, huge. I mean, to me, it's everything, uh, going into different cafes. There's a different vibe for me. It's, it's all, we were talking before on this, that coffee, a lot of times it's, you can have great coffee in many, many places, Mm -hmm. but there are spaces I will not go into because I don't like the vibe. I'll tell you this. If you look up Bones Coffee and look up their Costa Rica bag, I would not walk into a coffee house that looks like this. No. Just off Mm-mm. the package. No, it's like, that looks like Ed's Pet World. <laughs> and I smell it. I can just smell the the guinea pig smell. <laughs> Ed's Pet World. So I'm Here not, we go now. Ed's yeah. Pet World. So I'm not going to that Where are we cafe. going? Ed's Pet World. <laughs> Oh, my God. If you're not from the Birmingham, Alabama area, we got to talk about Ed's Pet World. It's <laughs> a special place. Oh, my God. <laughs> it no longer exists because it was like, yeah. I mean, before, I, I've never seen the Netflix episode of Tiger King or whatever. It was UHF alive. <laughs> badges? Oh, we don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> Today, we're teaching poodles how to fly. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. You know, it's like. Oh, man, like Ed, God bless him, had to be a, I don't know, maybe if there's people in Birmingham that knew him or family, yeah. please don't judge me. He's probably a great guy. But he seemed like you walk in, yeah. everything's out of its cages. I thought I was going to get you bit by an st- alligator. <laughs> Every you time got I'm snakes in just crawling around, You're birds flying. Around. You got, it's just chaos. It's like <laughs> land of the free, you know, yeah, they for were free. all the animals and, and how that place did not get shut down. I mean, it was like walking into the behind the scenes <laughs> of a zoo without any cages. It was. And uh, that's exactly what this thing looks like. Yeah. So I would not walk into that cafe. So power of branding anyways. So yeah. you, why do you buy what you buy? Do you buy them because you're loyal to the brand or comfort or price or anyway? Yep. It's all about, to me, okay. it really is. It's all about the brand. So it's when you vibe. get prescription drugs 
from the doctor, do you pay for the generic or the brand name? Well, there's sometimes that cheapskate comes out. In <laughs> I'll see. get generic. I'll yeah, go when, generic it, when it comes to medicine, I'm like, yeah. is it the same thing? Like the Walmart brand? I'm like, <laughs> compare to Advil. Or maybe I don't trust the old big pharma. Like, yeah, I'm like, oh, gosh. I'm like, yeah, they're just yeah. trying to make some money off me now. Yeah. But a guitar that you pay your money for, it's, it's you get what you pay for. Yeah. <laughs> Drugs. <laughs> I'm talking prescription drugs from the doctor. Anyway, I know. Okay, still. So <laughs> that's. I think that's just fear mongering. I only use this name brand, but no, the generic same thing. Okay, it's like Kirkland brand. If you are familiar with Costco, oh yeah, a lot of those are actually private label roasted in like Starbucks facilities. Mm-hmm. So you're getting Starbucks coffee, but you're getting a Kirkland brand. It's interesting to me the package. It's interesting to me how the power of a package. It's Mm -hmm. the same product, but the packaging it it comes in plays on the psyche. Mm -hmm. You know, it all, all totally, all day long. It's Uh, like our computers right here, MacBook Pros. Yeah, love them. Yeah, they're great. They just, it's, it's like you just feel creative. And I know that the computer world's done a great job coming out with some more sleek designs, even Mm -hmm. with, you know, Dell, Microsoft, all these other brands. But, you know. Is Dell still in business? (laughs) Oh, yeah, they are. What was the store, computer store back in the uh, 90s, late 90s, early 2000s? It had the, like, uh, the cow print on it, white and black. Gateway, was it? Gateway Computers? Yeah. Do they, they have, like, huge gateway stores. Mm -hmm. It's like, is that even a. Yeah, was that. They still do that Microsoft brand? I don't know. At all. I always it's so interesting. I always thought Bill Gates Gateway. Mm-hmm. I always thought it went hand in hand, but maybe it didn't. So, but yeah, brands huge. If you're joining us for the first time, you're like, what? What's happening right now? We're just having a good time. We're catching up. Uh, we obviously had a couple of weeks off since yep. we've last recorded. You went on a vacation. I went on a vacation. It's interesting that our both our <laughs> our little mini breaks of summer vacation happen on the same week without even planning it. No. Nope. I'm very uh, cautious to tell people where I was because I don't want the secret to get out Mm. because like where you were, everybody was Mm -hmm. (laughs) where I was. It's still very intimate and just like, uh, I don't want to even tell people. Yeah. Because it's just like a few high rise, like two restaurants. I'm on the same type of beach. You can still walk on the white powdery beach and not be filled with so many people Mm -mm. and feel like Mm -mm. I can't sit here because this belongs to the property of. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. A whole stretch of miles of just white sand and no high rises and just some homes. And yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I guess I'll tell people like, where did you go? So it's your, your call. It's your (laughs) beach. (laughs) No, it's You're a great place. So we went to Navarre Beach, Florida. So if you're looking for the type of place that you could go and ride go-karts and flip upside down and be shot into the sky and have arcades and parties and clubs and all the other crazy stuff that different beach type scenarios offer you, that this is not for you. No. Okay. So this is the place you go like with your family to where you're just really there for two things, beach, sand, pool. Yeah. That's it. And so Beautiful. we, man, we went, we had a good time. We had a great time. In fact, um, you know, I know there's a lot of controversy around the, you know, shark type stuff that's been happening. And my heart goes out to those who have impacted, who have been impacted by that. Yeah. Um, but man, I've been, I grew up around the ocean and I love it. And yeah, I call it the ocean. It's the Gulf of Mexico, but it's still the ocean to me. Um, and I get it. And every time I've been in the water, I've always been around marine life. Uh, including sharks and manta rays and true. all those things. And so I've, you know, I want my dad, my dad's like, you didn't get in the water, did you? I was like, of course I did. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? You know, I'm just that kind of person. And, uh, and so we got in a kayak and we went out dude, we were literally, we went out. Um, Navarre has one of the longest piers in the state of Florida. It was like, I don't know, 1600 feet long. So yeah. we got, we rented these kayaks. We went out in the water and, uh, dude, there were literal. I mean, I'm not making this up. I'm not exaggerating at all. This is not the evangelist in me, but the, the dolphin were right there within at least 10, 15 yards of us. It was so, so cool. You were protected from the sharks. I know. That's what I did. dolphins, are, uh, that's they what take I, care of business. That's what I told Linda. You know, I told her, I said, look, anywhere there's dolphins, there, I mean, are there sharks? Yeah, but they're going to stay away from the dolphins. Mm-hmm. Because dolphins, are, I don't know what it is, but they're like... <laughs> 
It's that loud, annoying sound. Oh, I mean, oh, that, and they'll, they'll come and circle around them and hit them on the nose, and oh, yeah. they just they annoy them. sharp noise. Nose. Yeah, so we had a great time. It was very relaxing. I was very thankful and very grateful that I had a, a chance to get away with the family and, and get to my happy place. And so we went to Navarre Beach. It. We drove over to the – so if you're not familiar with the Gulf Coast, you know, it's – there's all these cities, you know, it starts from Gulf Shores, Alabama. Yes, there is a beach in Alabama. It's beautiful. And then you work your way going over to the east and you get into Florida and there's Pensacola Beach. And then there's this uh, beautiful national seashore of just like 10 miles of nothing but sand. It's an island. And then there's that's when you land into Navarre Beach and then you get over to Fort Walton, Destin, Seaside, uh, you know, all the 38 areas over in the Panama City. And it's beautiful. And so a lot of us end up, well, we're four hours away. It's not that far. So it was a good time. So I came back very inspired. How about you? Oh, yeah, same. It's always great to get back from the beach. That's where, you know, we we just grew up going there. And it's very much the culture around the area of the country that we live. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody loves the thought of being by a body of water. Yeah. I know you lived away from it for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's always special. We decided to take our dog with us this time. Let's go. So we've never taken a dog with us to the beach. And man, that's a whole journey in itself because you got to actually find a beach house that will let you have a pet. There's obviously the extra cost that comes with it, but I've never explored it. So I've never been aware that like dogs aren't even allowed on the beach. That's so weird. I mean, it, I get it. I, I mean, get if it you're, now. I don't think I've ever thought about it before. I think there's certain places they allow them to be. There are. Well, and if you're a resident of whatever state you're in that has yeah. a beach, you can actually apply for a license to have a dog on the beach. Okay. Well, we weren't residents, so we couldn't get all that approved. But what was cool is we did some research, and where we stayed, we were more on this 30A kind of area. You've heard of Seaside, Seagrove, all these places. Yep. We stayed there, but then we, we researched it, and there's a place called Pier Park. That's on the near Panama City, that's, right? It's heading towards Panama City. <clears throat> that's like a new, like it's a kind oh, of a new so development. Cool. I don't know, maybe it's 10, 15, 20 years old. Well, it's but very I'd say touristy, new. but yeah, yeah that, it feels new. And it's, it's, I mean, it's really, it's the new place to be where it used yeah. to be further east. Yeah, it's like a boardwalk down type the beach. thing and all, right? Yeah. And they based it literally all around this pier. And uh, for you dog owners out there who've always wanted to take your dog to the beach, there's actually to the right of that pier, if you're looking out the Gulf, you have this probably 300 yards of beach that you can bring your dog to. And it literally walks right up to the pier so you can experience the pier kind of life underneath it. And mm-hmm. um, that was really cool. Like we've never experienced that life. And yeah, so we did the dog thing, dealt with the mess of yeah, sand I was gonna and say- ocean and how was that? I mean, yeah, this one's like, oh, look, he's jumping in the water and having oh, a good yeah. time. And it it's awesome. like clumps of sand uh, and uh, nasty. Yeah. Uh, once it's all said none, I'm it sure. Was, it was, it was it nasty smelled, in It smelled the like a wet dog. It did. Yeah, yeah. So there's the cost with everything. Yeah. But yeah, we did that. And But overall, good food, good swimming. Yeah, good, but good son. it's fun that you took the step because you, now you have a memory with it. And yes, there's always the bad that comes with that kind of stuff. Oh, and yeah. is it bad? I don't know, but it's a fun memory. Yeah. You know, it's but, a lot of sacrifice. It really is. But to create everything a worth experiencing, you know, there's a sacrifice for something that's great. That's so the so memory good. is awesome. And we got back in the groove and That's the coffee pot. That's our Bones oh. coffee. It's reminding us, I'm still hot over here. <laughs> I was like, come and we, drink another we're sitting shell. here like, is this the trumpet sound? <laughs> what? <laughs> what is happening right now? Talk about the trumpet. I'll never forget. I love how this, we can just literally shift on a dime of yeah, combo. Yeah, man, I'm just saying. Because the, you know, you probably heard it. I would imagine you could hear the beeping in the background. It was our coffee reminding us that it's still on it's, its still warmer. Like, hey, uh, you going to drink me over here? Yeah, it's like, come, don't just sniff and scratch, but come and drink. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the trumpet, you know, when you say that, I think back to one night when we were in When the midnight youth group. calls. Well, I don't even know if you, you may have actually we'll been be in, in a, home. You may have been in big yeah. church yeah. that night, but uh, we had... Um, uh, this youth pastor, he was there and wanted to have this moment where he was talking about how when the, you know, when they marched around the wall and they shouted and the trumpet sounded and the walls came down and it was this epic moment. And we were up there as the worship team where we were going to bring in some music and start singing together. And he really, I mean, you got to hand it to him. He worked this moment of awesome. He looked at 
um, Ryan, who listens to this podcast. So shout out to our buddy, Mr. Ryan. Ryan. Amazing, amazing piano player, musician. He is just, he's brilliant at it. And so he calls Ryan up. He's like, Ryan, he, he's like, find me a good trumpet sound. <laughs> and so Ryan's ready. I mean, we're, and we haven't tested oh, anything out, man. but we're ready. We're, I mean, he's getting us hyped up. And even yeah. as the band, we're like jumping. We're ready to like scream. So and he said, when y'all hear this trumpet, I want you guys to lift up a shout for the Lord. And so he said that. And he was like, y'all ready? One, two. You know, they get you ready. Yeah. Now I'm about to say three. You know, he's a guy. It's like WrestleMania. And we're like, yeah, we're getting ready. And he says, and three and Ryan hit that key. We envisioned the sound of like just really majestic. <laughs> and he hit this button and it went. <laughs> <laughs> it even had a little, it even had that little trill at the end that was fancy, like <laughs> In the room, the, the oh, youth pastor man. tried to manufacture so excitement, yeah. but the room wouldn't buy it, and everybody busted out in laughter. <laughs> the only guy that wasn't laughing was Ryan. He was a little ticked yeah, with like, the sound. <laughs> if you knew Ryan, his nickname was Riney. Yeah. Riney. And he just oh, was so man. ticked. Like, oh. that's the only sound I can get from it. <laughs> and he said, Ben, just, just bring in a chord. <laughs> So we just brought in like a G chord and we started going from there. But that moment oh my of the gosh. trumpet, it was about the about as loud as that oh. coffee maker over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! The keyboard, they didn't quite have oh, them lame. like they do now. <laughs> oh man! That's Whoa. why you need to you need to test things before you like set it up in the moment. There's a lot to be said with that. <laughs> that was for you, Ryan. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna throw something at you. And I didn't even tell you I was gonna do this. <laughs> so I want you to tell me the first thing that you think of when I name a color. All right. All right. I'm gonna give you a few colors. I want you to just, just name the very first thing you think All of. Right. All right. First thing that comes to mind. All right. So when you think of the color red, what do you think of? My um red. my Nike jacket I used to always wear as a kid. Okay, yellow. My God, these are jerseys. My goalie jersey. Okay, purple. <laughs> Our friends uh, that they went with you to Idaho. Okay, I think of Heather because her favorite color is purple. All right, black. The outfits that I wear every day. Blue. My son Dax because he loves that color. Okay, white. Surrender. Oh, there you go. Okay. So mine were red Ferrari. Okay. Yellow McDonald's. Okay. Purple Barney. <laughs> Black Johnny Cash. Oh. Blue the ocean. And white was peace. I don't know Excellent. why. I don't know Excellent. why. Yeah, anyway, I just I don't know why. It's interesting. I'm curious. Like when I said those colors would be really interesting if we had a way to your back with oh, people yeah. think I like the that. moment that it comes in your it head. It's good. But it, you branding, talk about branding. You were a lot of that had to do with clothing. It did. Different things. Yeah. So I'll never forget that red and black yep. jacket I had. That's the first thing when you say red. It's like, man. The Coca Cola jacket? Or was that my Coca Cola? No, it was in oh, Nike. Okay. It was a Nike warm up. And I mean, the other thing that would hit my head was Kai, because my second oldest loves the color red. Gotcha. But for some reason, that popped in my head. I almost said Sub Zero, too, for so, Mortal Kombat. <laughs> he was blue. So I know we're jumping around, but back to the beach and you're talking about your dog. What else did you guys do that was that you came back with? Yeah, I mean, that was, it was just, I mean, me and Summer, when we're in that, just that drive to the beach, you know, our kids are, we have four boys. They're all at that age of, they've got the headphones on, the Apple AirPods, they're, they're online, they're in their world. And it gives me and Summer this time where, We'll take our, like my AirPods, I'll put one in my left ear, I'm driving, mm -hmm. and I'll let her take my other one and put it in her right ear. And we'll listen to things together. Yeah. But our ears that are closest to the center of the car are still in tune that if our kids need yeah, anything. that's good. And so we're very much into, um, like we love from marriage ministry to even just your your authentic self. I mean, that's really one of our big messages. And I think that when we're coaching people and helping people, we're in that world. So to me, vacation, the trip there and back represents we're in this learning mode. 
even though you think vacation, it's like you're chilling out for us. It's this learning mode of just stuff that we know that, that we're going to be doing together. And so that's what, that's how it was for us. It's relaxing when I get home. So when I get back, I'm revved up Mm -hmm. and ready with everything I do from Highlands to Highlands college to the stuff that, you know, the coaching and the consulting that I do. That's really good. Well, I came away. So it's interesting. So you you go on vacation, but yet it's inspiring. And so no matter where I go, I'm always inspired by creativity. And and no matter what moment I walk into, like the, the beach type moment, I came back you know, I was thinking about it the whole time. I'm looking, I'm observing. I'm always trying to keep my eye open to see things that people can't see. And I'm noticing some stuff that doesn't exist. And I'm like, hmm, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I put that filter that through my entrepreneurship eyes and I begin to think, oh, wow, okay. Yeah. I'm noticing a need that doesn't exist. Now, there are things that exist in this category, don't get me wrong, but that aren't necessarily something that I would buy or purchase. Right. And I'm thinking... If my style is a certain way, I'm, I'm believing that other people's style might be the certain way. And they're like, man, I'd really like to walk away with some stuff, yeah. if you will. Oh, yeah. But I'm not just going to spend money on something that, it, yeah, you know. <clears throat> so anyway, I came back inspired. So then I came back with this idea and this creativity that I'll mm-hmm. share later. And I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, wow, this, I don't know if anything I might be able to do something with it. And uh, I'm I, and so here's what I began to think is how can I create something that funds what needs to be funded? And in, in in other words, a lot of the inspiration things that God has given me for ministry are things that need to be funded in order to do for free, like the missions work that we're doing with pastors across the country and offering relief to them in the form of preaching or, or or time off or whatever that might look like. Right. And so that needs funding. So my creativity came back from my inspiration point of what can I create that's in Mm -hmm. my hand and use that would generate funds for what needs to be funded. So good. And so I'm just, I'm, I don't know, man, I'm just, I was inspired. I came through, I showed you some things and I'll mention it maybe, you know, as we get closer to get it more developed. Yeah. But I'm just in this vision mindset right now where I'm like writing down the vision and creating something that doesn't exist. Right. And just from design to just, I don't know, man, it's just really, I I'm, I'm, I'm very refreshed. Well, I think it's one of the things me and you, that draws us together so much all of our life because there's that artistic and entrepreneurial side that we, you know, we know that we talk about because it's constantly new ideas and, Mm -hmm. but it is, I mean, you could look at something and say, Ooh, I don't like that. Let me create it. Yep. But I love how you said that. What if that's an, you're creating an opportunity to fund something that's going to allow you to further fund uh, what you you really have a deep sense of mission for. You're stewarding the call of God in your life because he didn't just make you like a person who works in ministry. Mm-hmm. He's also giving you these other gifts for you to go steward. And you're really looking outside of, you're, you're breaking down these walls that we can kind of build up, yeah. these fortresses. And it's like, boom, the fortress must come down so that you can see outside and operate in full creativity which will actually, it'll help you be the unique God branding of who he created you to be. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of coming up with ideas and just not doing anything with them. Yeah. I think a lot of people, God has spoken and inspired and they talk themselves out of it. Agreed. Because of, well, this or that. And I'm like, here, what's the worst case scenario that can possibly happen? Yeah. If this doesn't work. What's the word? What is it? Like, I'm like out a few, you know, yeah. thousand bucks or something. I mean, or whatever. Like, I mean, I've lived long enough to see that there is nothing that can hold me back from doing whatever it is that is in my heart. And so, yeah. so I think if you're listening to this and you're young or you're old and you're got an idea and you're thinking, I really like to see this come to fruition. Can I just say, write it down, man, write it down. Yeah, process it, power and write it, put it down, begin to share that idea with a few trusted people and share it and mm-hmm. go, Hey, what do you think about this? What is it like? And if you don't know how to create a brand or a logo or whatever, or something that comes, it comes along with that. Email me. I'll help you do what I can. Right. Why not take a step, man? That's what I felt like when we planted the church. I was like, what do I have to lose? I think I told you guys that, you know, when we moved, it's like, you know, if this doesn't work, I mean, at least we were obedient, took a step and 
what's the worst that can happen? You yeah. have to come back home. Yeah. So all my friends and family. Okay. Is that a bad thing? No. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the church is still going on. I talked to the pastor uh, yesterday, man. It's amazing what God's doing. But I, all that to say, I'm just thinking that this creativity and these ideas and, and the things that God's put in you, it's like, don't wait, just, but you have to write it down. But it's, it's so interesting to me when you begin to write it down and you see it in ink or in print or on the digital screen, whatever, it's amazing how all of a sudden now it's coming to life because you're seeing it and you're yeah. ruminating on it and it's churning. And then just don't try to, here's the thing that I, 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 I was telling you and I was telling other people, I said, I'm in this creative process where nothing, I don't, nothing's impossible. Don't tell me how this can't work. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I want to think about all the things that just like, I don't, I'm not trying to be practical. This is dream state, throw it out there, come up with the craziest ideas, put it on paper. Because I, what I've found, man, is like there's nothing that is impossible with the Lord. Now, there are some things. Yeah, when you get into the practical, you might not be able to do just yet. But you got to start somewhere. But do not limit yourself, man. Throw it out there. You got to. Dream big. But write it out so that you can run with it. Yeah, so that you can run with it. Because, yeah. I mean, there's there as you were saying, whether you're an artist or it's an entrepreneur or it's something to do, mm -hmm. you've got to do it. And... There's this acronym I created called the MAPS. I call it MAP, the MAPS filter, M-A-P-S. Okay. And it's a step that you put yourself through when you're making a decision. And so it's like M stands for motivation. And I like to ask myself, um, does this, so I ask myself three questions on, on motivation. Does this glorify God? Mm -hmm. That's or, good. And that has to be a yes for you to proceed. Yeah. And, and you know what? Glorifying God is very... It doesn't have to live with inside the local no, church. Is that is a very broad stroke. Right so it's like there. the idea that I'm creating right now to fund what needs to be funded. This is oh, not going to be a Christian right. ministry. That's right. This is going to be a product that is sold in the marketplace. That's right. Yes. That actually feeds and funds ministry. And you taking yeah. pleasure in creating yeah. the person who created uh, and, and roasted this coffee if he took pleasure or she took pleasure in making this, yeah. that is an act of you are glorifying God in the sense of Absolutely. gratefulness. So that's a very broad stroke. Yeah. But I still look at that motivation side of does this action glorify God? Mm -hmm. The second one is does it build up others? So maps, you have motivation. Okay. First question, does it glorify God? Yep. The second question under M is does it build up others? Yeah, that's good. And it doesn't have to do that when you could skip to the third. And the third one is, does it help me develop my core, my yeah, self-concept yeah. of who I am? So it's either developing somebody else or you're developing yourself because you got to be moving in the right direction in life or you're going backwards. So that's the motivation side. Which and I, then, can I pause there? Yeah. I love it. It's God, others, than self. Exactly. It's like totally it, it but there's there's those are kingdom principles that are found in God's That's word. Exactly what it is. That elevates you. And some people only yeah. think of others, like they'll scripturally think yeah. think of others. Yeah. You gotta look after yourself before you can really be a help to others. That's it's so putting good. on the mask it's so good. in the airplane before you put the oxygen mask on somebody else. Yeah. And then so A stands for advice. Okay. Like, first of all, have you prayed about it? The number one advice you're gonna get is from the Holy Spirit. Have you prayed about it? The second one is have you sought the advice from uh, the authorities, the pastors, mm -hmm. the leaders, the mentors, the coaches, the counselors, the parents, the spouse in your life. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean they have to back it up, but have you put yourself through the process to allow them to maybe poke a hole in it that you didn't see? Once again, praying about it is essential. The other parts at least go through the process to get their common thought of your endeavor those trusted friends you were talking about, mm -hmm. you take what they say and you still proceed, but it's the act of putting people in your life and not being on an island by yourself with a decision. Love it. So that would be the advice side. Uh, P stands for peace. And that's the simple uh, two questions. Is there peace? Is there no peace? Yep. And if you do not feel that peace to proceed, you just mm -mm, yep. don't do it. Stay away from it. Yep. And so and the last one is S and it stands for steps. So now it's time to take the step and you look at the previous things. If you've taken all the other things into consideration, is there peace? Yes. Then take the step as an act of worship and just do it. If there's not peace, yeah. then continue to do what you're already doing, mm -hmm. knowing you may bring it back up for reassessment and it yeah. might be a season to do it or God will burn it away and you won't even have the desire or you might just live with the 
pain of you wanting you have you have a desire that you can't do anything with and that's part of the suffering side mm-hmm. as a as as a follower of Christ and there is so much to be gained in that so i call that the maps filter when making a decision no that's really good and it is a process it doesn't happen overnight or quickly but it's just this whole churning and ruminating and not being in a hurry in in and really just going down the check marks of just uh, accountability to yourself, but also having inviting other people to show you blind spots, even inviting God into that, which I love that. I'm glad That's you right. came back to the peace part because I was sitting there thinking, yeah, you might not have peace in this moment. It doesn't mean that's a bad idea or doesn't need to be accomplished. Right. Right. But it could be, you know, I, I always think about in 2015 when I felt like the Lord was putting a calling in our heart to plant a church. Yeah. Well, we knew that that was a part. I mean, we went through this maps process, but there were moments where it was like, we don't have a piece to do this right now, right? But then when that happens, then you're like, all right, well, I know now now's the time. Absolutely. Right? And there's some things I'll share on further yeah. or future episodes of of things that I've actually done where I've gone through the motivation, I've gone through the advice, mm-hmm. I've gone through uh, the peace portion. It was a non-peace. Even after receiving the the cheers and the rooting you own to go do what you thought you were going to do that you were motivated to do. Yeah. All of a sudden there was no peace. And my step was I remain doing what I was doing. Yeah. And I would say on the advice part, that's where it's so important to have the right people in your life. Mm -hmm. You don't need yes people, but you need people in your life who can be honest and honoring in, you know, they can be like to help you see all sides because you're not asking them for permission you know, you know, nope. and, and like, I'm not asking for permission, what I feel like God's kind of inspiring in me right now for this, but I am looking to say, Hey, what are some things that I might not be seeing about this? And yeah. knowing what you know, and within the industry you're in, how, how would I best need to steer this? You know, how should I steer the rudder on this ship to point me in the direction to get me toward the place that I need? to, you know, to, to be where you're calling me to be, or for this to, to grow to the level that it needs to grow to or not grow to. And really just to kind of say, where are the blind spots and the things that I'm not seeing that you, that you could show me? Cause I'm, I'm emotionally attached. You're not. So. That's right. Yeah. Cause <laughs> advice, so, advice, yeah. when you're talking about the, there's two different columns, you got your relational connections column in the sense mm-hmm. of friends and you don't want to be listening to the acquaintances or the casual friends. You want people yeah. who are at least cohorts doing what you're doing yeah. or they're close friends or they're intimate friends. Like, I don't mean yeah. that of a lover, like the mean you are yeah. intimate friends, you yeah. know, every secret. I know every secret. Yep. I'm going to be asking your advice because you've earned that place. And then those, I call these automatic qualifiers of people. They might not have the time of a Rhett Barden in my life, but uh, maybe it's your pastor. Mm hmm. Maybe it is your counselor who you just started getting counsel from a counselor, a licensed counselor, maybe a month ago. Right. But you give them an automatic qualifier because of the role they're in and you automatically have a trust. So they get to give the advice and you listen to it. But then, as you were saying, Rhett, you take the advice everybody gave and you still have to move it forward. Yeah. To see how it sits with you. Which is the peace factor. Exactly. Because after receiving that, settling on it, allowing the Holy Spirit... You know, God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit is what's alive and active on the earth today. People say, well, Jesus is in my heart. No, he's not. The Holy Spirit is in your yeah, heart. That's right. Right. The Holy Spirit is what testifies to Christ in your life. And so God, the Father's on the throne. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, seated yeah. there, praying and making intercession for us. And that's then right. he sent the power of the Holy Spirit. So if you've never heard those terms or that terminology, really, that that's the very breath of God, the power of God that's alive and active on the earth that brings heaven to earth, including wisdom knowledge, understanding, insight, direction, peace. And so when we pray and we ask God, the Holy Spirit to move in us, we're asking for heaven to move in our hearts to allow us to have that peace that transcends all understanding, that guards our heart, that says, you know what, despite all efforts that are you know, against me, I have peace to move forward. And I know we're going to take this ground and we're going to do this against all odds. Yeah. Right. Or, you know what, I don't have peace to move forward, even though I know I could force this and make this happen and it still be what somewhat successful, but it wouldn't necessarily have the blessing of God on it in a way that will be fruitful. 
because I don't have a piece, but I'm going to try to force it. I, I think yeah. that's a, I think that's a powerful thing you can talk about in so many different areas of life. Yeah. You know, we call it creating an Ishmael, yeah. right? It's like, well, God's not moving at the rate that I want him to move. And I know I don't necessarily have a piece, but my God, I know I'm called to do this and I'm going to go do it, make a name for make myself. It happen. We're going to make it. It, it will have the, on the outside effort, you know, the, it will produce fruit because there's a, a, there's a law in that, that you're, yeah, but do you really want to create something that's not necessarily completely blessed and favored by God in your right. life with his anointing on it, his, his touch, if you will, to go and produce fruit that's going to be lasting, mm. you know? And it's like, man, so sometimes it's better to wait until you have that peace and that's allow right. the Lord to open the doors that he needs to open in the right time and right moment to see these things come to fruition. Sometimes you have to take steps in order to find out I don't have peace because sometimes it's like, well, I don't necessarily have a piece or don't have a piece, but I still need to make some movement. And in the movement that I'm making, that's where doors are either open or that's shut. Right. And you begin to realize, yeah, I don't have a piece here because I'm I'm taking steps. And rather than just sit around, and go, well, right. I'm just waiting on God to show yeah. up, man. I the, mean, you yeah, know, your I got official this. step is yeah. the one that's like the step to officially yeah. do it. You've already taken these little bits of the process that's you're, you're, you're working. It's like you're ideating, you're conceptualizing. And then it's like, now it's time to implement. Mm -hmm. If you don't watch out, you can get the, you've, you've passed everything you need to, you have peace and now you just got to do it. And that can be tough for people. And it reminds me of, and it was in the late nineties. I'll honor uh, really my first pastor, pastor Randy Williams, mm -hmm. our pastor, Randy Williams, uh, first seven years of my life surrendered to Christ. He really helped build that foundation for me. But he took me in the late nineties. He said, Hey, come with me. And we went to go watch John Maxwell. He was doing like an event at one of our big auditoriums and just packed out with thousands of people there. I had never heard of him. And so I'm listening to this message and John Maxwell, now we know him well, he's come and talked a lot, especially in our circles of pastor Chris, he's truly like a son to John Maxwell. Well, I'm listening to him him speak, and at the end of it, he always is great about leaving you on a screaming kind of moment, like play the trumpet sound, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 and John Maxwell tells a story about his... Oh, now we're going to never forget that. I'm sorry. Never, never. Yeah, it's so good. But he tells a story, and it might have been his nephew or grandchild. I can't remember which one, but he was playing in the championship game, Little League Baseball. Okay. And it's two strikes and it's like three balls and bases are loaded and they're down. Like they're, they're only down by one point. Okay. Like a base hit's going to actually bring two in. Okay. Even on the worst hit. And so he's there and the pitcher pitches and he lets it go past him and it's a strikeout. And he talks about the agony that he went through wondering what would have happened and he told his grandson, if I you'll, swung, you'll what never know. If I would have swung. You'll never know yeah. unless you swing the bat. So good. And he used that truth and he began walking around to the stage. Literally, he'd be like, you'll never know unless you swing the bat. And so he started walking to every part of the stage and he'd do a swing formation. Swing the bat. And he's trying to tell the crowd and motivate them. Like, there's something in your heart. Go for it. And I'm sitting there and it was really cool because I had just overcome some wounds where I had kind of shut down with a recent disbandment that we had gone through with, ironically, a band that we played in together that was really ripped out from us. Yeah. And I was going through some hurt with that. And in that moment, through the voice of John Maxwell, it was the Holy Spirit speaking to me saying, hey, Justin, swing the bat, go start another band. And that would be when I came home that night and started the next band that me and you yeah. and the name we referenced earlier, Ryan Jennings his image and band. some other friends with his yeah. image band. Yeah. That's what started that at a John Maxwell event. I had the courage finally to swing the bat. I never knew that story. That's why we do this podcast. I Rhett. love that. New I never, things are being I, learned. You know, what's interesting. I was sitting here thinking like, how in the world did we go from all the, whatever we were talking about earlier, which was nonsense, but just our relationship and conversation to this. 
It's so cool to see how the Holy Spirit leads and guides yeah. to actually, because some people are like, is there anything worth taking home out of this? Right. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what, my, I we're mean, going off the air. I feel invigorated. We're like, going this from yellow pages and <laughs> white pages. To, oh, in my mind, I'm right. Like, I'm already like, I already know it's going to be edited out, like, but they're not going to be hearing right now <laughs> because we're going to save, we're going to salvage oh this thing. Oh my gosh. But like, yeah, I never knew that. But yeah, you know, it's interesting you say that, but you could flip the story too. Cause what if you did swing the bat in, right? Let's say you missed. Yeah. You might be thinking, well, what if I would have just sat there and waited for the right pitch? It could be used both ways. It goes back it, it, to, it, there was peace though. Exactly. There was peace exactly. to do it. Exactly. So I, I, I think about it in the sense of maybe you have swung the bat mm -hmm. and you missed, mm -hmm. you know, because maybe you were too aggressive yeah, and you were trying to make things happen. And maybe you didn't put it through the proper proper pr place, process. right? And maybe your step was to wait for the right pitch for the right door to open mm -hmm. in that right moment to be there where it was a, you know, uh, yeah. a ball. And then God opened the opportunity for you to walk. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, yeah. God can it work in both scenarios is what I'm trying to way. say. Yep. So, yes, yeah, swing the bat. But also you might be at a place where you need to wait instead of forcing the door open. Allow God to open the door to walk you to first to get that person from third yeah. to home plate. What a great I, angle. I'm just saying, you motivations, know, right. That, that we can't do it off that. Cause me right. and you were talking the other day and I was saying how you've inspired me so many years you and too. it would, it would take too long for us to jump in these stories. But a quick one to say is I still remember going to, um, Nampa, Idaho to watch you launch one life church. And, I was just so excited for you as we were there to see 262 people yeah. actually come in Idaho. Mm -hmm. Like this is unheard of. That's like having 800 show up in the South. Yeah. I mean, it was massive. Yeah. And so I ended up getting on an airplane and because I was so motivated after that, God, what was this? 2018. I remember just that initial motivation, like, God, I need to go do that. If I would have gone with the motivation and come home and said, boys, yeah. summer, yeah. we're doing it, yeah. we would have completely missed it because obviously that motivation was awesome, but it was just a motivation more. I was excited for you, and it brought up excitement of different aspirations I may have, and I was projecting it towards that to mm. potentially, am I going to make something happen? Yeah. Of course, we never did, but that was a true motivation, but it was a motivation that I had because I experienced an inspiration from you. And I think we can get in a habit. Once we get motivated, we're ready to go. Oh, I'm going to go do this. Oh, I'm yeah. going to go do that. And we don't put it through any, we just go with motivation. It's like, I don't, I don't know if it's glorifying God. Surely maybe it is. Glorifying Everybody's God. talking about passion, passion. What's your passion? Yeah, Run what's with your passion? passion, passion, passion. Oh, passion. I'm passionate about this. Oh, I want to do yeah, this. Dude, I only want to so work a job. Of that. I'm only going to be in this role because yeah. I got to be passionate about it. No, sometimes no. you're going to work a job yeah. that you got to find a way. Yeah. How can you make the maximum impact mm -hmm. the maximum capacity for that yeah. role. It might not be something you love, but you can still be in there and make a difference. Right. But we're in so passion, passion focus that our motivation is what drives us. We're not thinking about glorifying God. We're not thinking about building up others. It might say glorify God and we might say build up others, yeah. but it's really that last one. It's oh, like, my gosh. I just, this will complete me. I need to go be either on this stage or I need to be this product creator, this branding guy, because I saw this other guy or girl do this. Mm -hmm. And we don't put it through the advice. We don't seek out our friends or those in that we've placed in authority who have wisdom. And we ignore that piece. It's like, oh, man, no. I, yeah. Okay. That there's peace, so much, peace will come later. We need to carry this conversation on, man, Like because I, there's so much I could say about that that just within this time frame of context yeah <laughs> just, i mean because i'm like maybe yeah, we just wrap yeah. it up today well yeah and then just go ahead and well episode uh 23 mm -hmm. will be a continuation yeah i i do think it's interesting because there are a lot of podcasts and conversations that happen where you feel like you get to the end and it it's all wrapped up in a bow we've talked about this mm -hmm. and the more we listen to it and the more we're forcing ourselves to go look man i mean this is an ongoing conversation yeah. This is something we'll just continue to talk about. And so while this episode, I mean, so much, dude, the maps thing, like, even if you, even if I didn't know how to like particularly say that I've put myself through that process over time, mm -hmm. it's just a beautiful way to say it. Yeah. 
Um, simple. It is so, it's so simple. So motivation, it's a filter. It's a filter That's for, all it is. it's a filter that helps you set you up for success. That's right. There's, you know, so if you're dreaming about something, if you're wanting to take a next step, remember that maps, you know, asking yourself the question, motivation, advice, peace, and steps. That's right. And uh, I think that was so good. So, hey, we love you guys. Thank you so much for the time on the podcast. It's, it's been real. Looking forward to the next episode. Thank you for listening to Armchair Authentic with Rhett and Justin. We had a great time with you today. We'd love to hear from you so we can continue to create content that helps you as you're on your journey to fulfill your God assignments. You can reach us at info at armchairauthentic.com. Well, until next time, we hope you have a great week. We'll see you soon.